Hi, I'm Reggie Flanagan, Vice President of Sunny's Car Wash Controls. We're here today for another Tech Talk to discuss the development process within our, control, within our controls division. Our guest today, we have Fran Kateru. Love saying his last name. You guys have seen him before. We have Cristiano Da Silva. He is our Software Development Manager. And Christopher Russell, our Solutions Architect. And circling back to Ferran, I forgot his title. He is a lead R&D engineer. All of us have been here at roughly the same time. And yeah. you know, let's start with Cristiano. You want to tell us a little bit about the development process here and you know how it was born, why we put it together uh, over seven years ago now? Yeah, so uh, when, it, when I first came to Sony's, we had a product that required some re-engineering, some rethinking, some reimagination. The idea was back then to restructure the whole product, bring it to what we have today. Yeah, it is quite the, it's not the kind of uh, development that anyone's ever seen in the car wash industry. It's really bringing something that's modern that you're gonna see in a lot of different places than car wash. And you know, all of us didn't come from the car wash industry, but we brought our pieces of uh, knowledge in and, and built what we have today. So with that, Chris. Which is really what we set out to do, right? When we, when we started that, that sort of re-engineering project seven years ago now. We want to be able to push out those updates. We want to be able to um, enhance the product and, and meet the customer's needs uh, in that regard. So it's really a matter of our ability to scale and our ability to evolve the software as time went on. So then uh, Ferran, R&D. Uh -huh. so, uh -huh. so you started uh, tech support when I got here. I didn't understand why you're in tech support. <laughs> so what, what's your thought process there when I throw something at you or we put something together? It's the best place to get feature requests. Uh, customers are always asking for new features, updated features. We use that feedback we get from our customers, from our support team, and incorporate it into our our software. Right? We'll, we'll, uh, we've got a we've got a feature request that that someone makes, and they think, hey, maybe this will this will be good for our other customers as well. So we we would take that feedback and we incorporate it into our um, software development process as well. You know, one of the approaches we took when uh, we first started putting our heads together is we wanted to break things down into uh, three customers whenever we think of a product. So we think of uh, the customer, which internally, what we call our customer is actually our client's customers. Right. And then we have the client, which is our real customer. That sounds confusing, right? And then we have our distributor, the installer. So whenever we're putting this together, we go, how can we make it easy for the installer? How can we make it so that it drives revenue for our clients? And then how does it uh, make it easy and want men convert a customer? And so if you look at something and you're putting together a feature and you see that it doesn't cover all three of those, those posts, then you gotta reevaluate it and go back and go, what am I missing? Because it's not covering our client, it's just covering something for the customer. If it covers the customer, convert them to the client, driving revenue makes it easy to install, cover yeah. everybody. Yeah. Software releases, you know, we're doing them every five weeks. Cristiano, what are, why do we change it to five weeks? to allow our developers to actually have a play time. It's what we call the tech week. They will be actually doing research, development, a proof of concept, any crazy idea they want to present us that would be good to integrate to our software platform. Uh, that's not a new concept. Actually, Google, Amazon, big software companies does the same thing. Along with the tech week, now I have a buffer time on the quality team for them to do extra regression and guarantee even greater software quality. But next I want to talk development cycle. This is going to include all three because each of you has a key process. I mean, you on the R&D <coughs> side, you're bringing something to fruition that an idea that then gets passed from you to the development team. Dev team takes it over, architecture is coming in. So there's a, there's a whole thing if you want to talk just from your side and then we can go down the line and see what you, each of you do in that role. So from if, if, uh, if I'm starting a new project, it doesn't automatically get incorporated into our normal dev cycle yet because we don't really know what we're going to find. Um, we have a d development phase, a discovery phase where we, we try to do some data collection. We're out there, we're trying to figure out, how, like let's say you know LPR was something that we did. We went in and, and we, you know, we kind of had to discover how, how customers are are their patterns, what their behaviors, how, how, if they're moving from one lane to another. Um, so those are some things that we had to uh, discover uh, initially to figure out, okay, what's the best placement for the camera, things like that. Um, so once we get to a point where we're ready to integrate it with our software, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and start creating um, tasks for the, for the 
uh, teams, um, you will have to work on this 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 back office piece. Uh, the POS team works on the, the POS side of it. And then that's when it gets more fully integrated into our five week cycle. Um, I mean, technically every week for, for, for R&D is tech week to me, because <laughs> we're working on crazy things every week. You don't know because it's always something new coming up in R&D, something new we want to test. And the way technology changes, um, you just got to be, you just have to keep up with, with what's what's coming out. What's yeah, so much comes out of there that becomes real products. That's where a lot of our innovation comes from. As a Cristiano, when it, so it's cleared R&D, not everything goes through R&D, of course. You know, some of it's just their feature, features that we're putting together. They're, they're something we can just e easily implement on our end or we schedule out through the period. It doesn't have to go through a rigorous R&D process. And when it comes to that, we have a very, uh, a very well-established process Part of the process does involve architecture. Let's say you have a bigger project, will require the creators as architect to come by and say, okay, this is how we should focus, this is how we should do it so we can scale on the long run. Uh, and then it comes to me, the project manager, you as the product owner, we come together, we define well how the feature should be worked and then go to the development team. The development team will spend a few weeks, about three to four weeks working on the project for each release. Some projects will take more than one release. And finally, when it's ready, we send it to QA. That will go over the whole feature, plus the whole project, and make sure that everything works as we expect it to be. What is the testing process? Can't be just punching buttons. <laughs> no, uh, we divide the testing process into two phases. Uh, the first phase is actually getting it to the project, to the engineers, and they will give that feedback to the development team, they will give that feedback to me, uh, to product owner, to project manager, and we will embrace that feedback and make the project even better. The second portion comes to automation. After things... I was going to tackle you if you didn't say automation. <laughs> just, just so we're clear, that's all that was going through my head right now. <laughs> okay. I was getting there, I was getting there. Yeah. He was poised. Uh, it, the automation comes by and that is where I think where the keyway magic comes in too because now we have a software development team that is focused in automating a manual part and running that several times over and over again. And they do that like uh, pretty much to 70% of our applications right now. It's pretty good. And, and that's really, pretty good. That's really important for, you had mentioned it earlier, you mentioned regression testing, which is really just making sure that the developers didn't break anything. And, and QA is important for, for stepping in and making sure that we haven't done that. Yeah. What happens if we do ship out something with a bug? How does that get handled? How does that get addressed? I'm glad that you brought up bugs. I mean, let's be honest, bugs happen. Not, not my it's, code. No, not, not my code. code. No, 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 not not right. it's, it's, so it's yeah, So it does happen. And when you're moving as, as quick as us and you're innovating and you're putting out things that no one's even seen before and you're coming right. up with ideas like we're putting together, yeah. you're bound to release a bug here and there. The yeah. idea is determining how critical it is. Uh, a lot of the times the bugs are not critical that we put out into the field. Right, right. But we still see them as something that we want to make sure that we get our clients happy and we see that it's something impacting several people. Right. Let's get it out there as a patch release. Yeah. Right. All right, so now where to you? So uh, yeah, as uh, as architect, uh, I work to really figure out how we're going to implement it in a way that's going to scale with our future. But, you know, I'm, I'm constantly looking at new technologies that are out there, um, you know, and, and experimenting with them, doing technology selection for these projects. Um, it, Spent a lot of time at the whiteboard, uh, but but yeah. So it's it's really about driving the big picture and the integration points and making sure everything is moving in the same direction and is going to survive uh, long term for us. All right. So we got the five week development cycle started out four weeks seven years ago. Uh, you can't really do anything without an architecture in place right. and looking at scale. And when you're looking at scale, you're not looking at six months out, one year out, you're not looking at short term, you're looking right. at long term, five to 10 years. Right. Knowing that things are gonna change in five years, there's not much you can do past that, but still you gotta look to say, all right, is this going to right. be able to adjust for it in the right. future? And then R&D just, I love you guys. Rolling around the mud until yes. you <laughs> <laughs> but, but it all starts with there. You go architecture, R&D, putting together features, talking right. to the clients, figuring out what's gonna make it, what's gonna hit the 80% and then implementing that in a way that's smart enough to ensure that it's going to be able to accomplish what we need, it's going to be user friendly, and really build the product that we have over the past seven years. Right. So I pulled this on Ferran last time. Yeah. I'll put on 10 seconds. 
Name every coding language we're using right now. Oh, jeez. Um, we've got Java, we've got uh, PHP, we've got Node.js, uh, Golang, Python. Um, uh, we've got uh, Groovy, which is, which right. is a derivative. <laughs> dot, dot .net. Uh, you're not supposed to help me. <laughs> <laughs> Time's up. Time's up. I came close. You did come close. <laughs> that on the spot, right? Yeah. That's rough. Yeah. You didn't, didn't warn me. You didn't warn me. I think you beat Ferran, though, by a few. Yeah, probably. He froze up yeah, on me a little bit. Yeah, four. Yeah. I did say ladder logic. All right, guys. So think about it. How many devices we have out in the field? Hmm. You know, someone asked me the other day, they go, do you know how many products you have in the field? And I thought they were quizzing me just like I did you. And I go, no, I don't. I said, I, I can list all of them, but off the top of my head, I'm not going to name every device. But when we're writing code, we're talking about pushing out code, not just to the point of sale, but to all these different devices. Yeah. Can you name the devices, Chris? Can I name the devices? I'm just kidding. <laughs> we'll but, uh, with, with Ron, like, when you're writing it, you know you're pushing out to digital queue, our tunnel controller, every piece. Right. Every time we, we, um, we publish our release notes or the releases coming up and we, on that release night, we, we set our servers up to, to, to let them know that there's an update there. That's going out to thousands of devices in the field all the, almost all at the same time. Kind of like when you get your, your update on your phone or your app, just hit update. So <clears throat> similar you know, in, the, in the field, but not just our field devices. We've got servers that we, we, we run in the cloud that we also push updates out right. to mm -hmm. to, um, to coincide with those, uh, with those updates that we're giving in, uh, to the field so that you know, all the software can run um, together. Yeah, I don't think people realize, you know, how much goes into a release night. There's a lot. It's, it's, a, lot. it's a process. Yeah. It, it does seem like, all right, we're going to, and we, we tell you, you're going to read the release notes, you're going to wake up in the morning and see new stuff, but. And that's why we've automated a lot of that, to make that more reliable and make sure that, that we have, uh, we don't have issues during that process, because we are updating so many devices. So, Cristiano, when we're talking about features, and you and I talk about features quite a bit, and, uh, you know, I'm always thinking about how I'm going to drive revenue for our clients. Just think about the marketing features that we have right now in back office. Uh, a marketing campaign is actually quite expensive if you don't do by yourself. And on back office, you can do all of that automatically. So if the multi fee that you're paying and just a marketing feature right itself, you already can reach a whole bunch of customers that you couldn't reach before. Not only that, now on back office, you can actually run all your car wash and you have a point of sale through driver and the revenue back. The only thing you're keeping us back is just a monthly fee to keep that thing up to date. Yeah, so you're and with new features all the time. So yeah, so you're seeing the real ROI there is going to be the marketing features, the time that's saved for being able to consolidate everything and uh, really cut down going from site to site running <coughs> reports. And some of the new stuff we have coming out, there's going to be a big ROI on that. That will, yes. So yeah. We have a big roadmap coming out. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for joining me. Ferran, Cristiano, Chris, I appreciate it. And uh, everybody out there, I uh, thank you for joining us for another Tech Talk. We look forward to seeing you next time.